The Metal Guys Tour Business Podcast is brought to you by Compton Group, a specialist recruitment agency working in the metal, manufacturing, and engineering sectors. Hey guys, Mike and Pete, The Metal Guys. Season three. Intro. Intro, yeah. Yeah, intro, yeah. This will be the first podcast of the new season. It's been a year since we kind of, or almost a year since we released anything as a podcast, but... Um, we're planning to get these out weekly, so it'll be at least 10 to 12 for this first season, and then we'll get straight into season four. Cynical so, people would say they've obviously gone quiet. No, no I think it's just <laughs> it's just a refocus. Just a refocus. Let's do more marketing, because that's normally what happens. Let's market yeah. when the market's bad. I think it was just a refocus. Seems what are your thoughts genuinely, rather than mugging me off about it? No, it's just why, no, why, that's normally like the typical thing, isn't it? Yeah. And people start posting more do more marketing when it's quiet. When they're really busy, they don't do any of it. Well, I'm quiet. He's so nice. travelling as no, much. No, no, but historically, that's normally what happens, isn't it? Yeah. Let's yeah. do a mail shot because we're quiet. Let's see what it drums up. Yeah. Well, it does. It does work. I know, but it's just, you know, how people normally do it when it's quiet. Just saying. Yeah. I feel like, feel like I've touched a nerve. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, cards, plans for this season. We've done 21 podcasts, recorded four so far. For this season, we've got a number of guests still to record within early January, but the plan is to get these out more frequently. I think both of us are set on doing these regularly, and I think going forward in 2024, it'd be nice to do them weekly, wouldn't it? You know, every Friday, get someone in, have a chat, get it shared. Yeah, 100%, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it helps. Why are you um, game for podcasting again, Mike? I think it's relevant, doesn't it? It's also nice to hear, like, to talk with people about careers, stories, what's going on in the industry. I think that's kind of, like I said just a second ago, keeps you relevant, doesn't it, in a way? it's You're finding stuff out, keeps us informative, and obviously that information gets shared to people who are, are obviously listening to the podcast as well. So I think everyone wins, don't we, really? Anyone you're looking forward to getting on? Terry Sargent. Why? You were excited last time when you saw him. It's uh, interesting what he's doing. I think kind of, what interests me with the steel boy is he didn't need to do it. He could have just finished off at Tisson and then just gone, you know what, I'm going to retire now. So to get involved with a startup, startups are hard. You know, even, right. even with the backing of, say, the investment they've got, it's still difficult. So I think kind of it's probably an opportunity that he didn't really need to get involved in. And the fact it's a startup is like, it's uh, it's even harder, isn't it? Well, he seems, I mean, when we saw him last year, it was like November, wasn't it? November, December time, mm. uh, back end of 2022. Um, they've been going a year now. It's not sponsored by them yet. Yeah, but it's just yeah, but that's the one I'm looking forward to anyway. Yeah. Anything else? Well, we don't know. I don't know who else is coming up. We got Grant coming on. Who called out? No, no, no. Yeah. I mean, I don't think we've got the budget for it. Oh well. well it, sure. Come on to anything, wouldn't it? Yeah. It's like get Snoop Dogg for the right money. Yeah. I don't know. Grant Adams from Surtest. Correct. That'd be another good one talking about manufacturing, and I think that's kind of great if we can start getting a different audience on the podcast. We start getting service providers, manufacturers, engineers, whatever it may be. It's always good to get a different type of audience, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And listening to other people's stories, frustrations, and going on in, within the industry. So. Well, I think that's the plan, because when we when we first set up this pod, I think like most people, you think, oh, it's great, let's do a podcast, it's a good idea. And the first thing people do is just start talking about people and their story, what? they did how they got where they got or how they got to where they got to um which is interesting i think that you know there's still going to be an element of meeting people and understanding that process but i think both of us are kind of looking at next year and going let's talk more about the topics that are more relevant in the industry sector and i think there's a number of people that we've been networking with and talking to more frequently now and i think next year will give us a good opportunity to do podcasts like we're doing now um, introduce more people to the wider metal sector, but broaden out those debates and those conversations. Well, I think that's what it's got to be as well, a debate. I think kind of since we've been doing them, I think I think we just agree with what everyone, has, what everyone says. And, that, and actually, I think sometimes for ourselves as kind of, of, of doing these, there has got to be a debate. Well, you've had plenty of calls moaning about me from people when we've done podcasts. Oh, we were about podcasts. Yeah, just yeah. Pe general. People just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I haven't had any from you. <laughs> no one's wrong in well, I don't agree with him. 
But you take what you want from that. <laughs> <laughs> you take what you want from that. But no, I think the debate. I think the debating side of it, I think, will be be relevant. I think that's going to be quite good fun. Um, and I think it'd be good for us. You know, I mean, we've the more the more I've been out over the last couple of years interviewing people, doing the media stuff I've been doing. I think I feel like I've got better at interviewing. But the more I've been interviewing, the more I kind of want to almost touch a nerve a bit, push it a little bit more, actually try and get people to give a bit more of an opinion rather than just a safety first approach that I think can be a bit a bit corporate and a bit company yeah. line, really. Yeah, yeah, 100%, yeah. So we'll kind of uh, see how that goes, I think. Yeah, we'll see. Part of the reason that we're doing this is we're pretty much five years in to our venture um, and lots of people contact us regularly with a kind of, you know, nice one, well done. They think we're doing really well, which we're not. <laughs> There's this perception that you're doing amazing well, because you've had a business. Like watch, call it. <laughs> we are doing well, aren't we? When you say really well, you're talking about I fi think financially. Yeah. The, on, on really the <laughs> individually. No, we're not doing really well individually <laughs> of going watch, call it. As a business... We are doing we are doing well, but I think everyone's on it. So the last two years, everyone's done really well. You know, we haven't got to the stage where you know you're not looking for a free car parking space outside the office. Yeah, I'm still car for free. Yeah, yeah far right. away. Yeah, exactly. I hope your car hasn't been keyed. Yeah, you know, I've only got one meet I had for Christmas. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, in Gammon this year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, in Gammon, <laughs> mate. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, I go down Greg's on the yeah. evening. Still got a, still got an overdraft, mate, and a maxed out credit card. Yeah. So yeah, we're. On that side of things, no, that is a, as a business we should be proud of, really. I think kind of the last few years we've built really strong relationships with different types of businesses now as well. I think kind of traditionally we were kind of just stainless and aluminium, aluminium distributors. And you look at kind of, you know, the end of last year when we're looking at who we've dealt with for 2023, you know, I think we've dealt with over... A, 150 different types of businesses in the sector in loads of different parts really from steel to aluminium to aluminium extruders to manufacturing companies to fasteners to you know foundries mm -hmm. and then that's that's pleasing to see and service providers as well yeah in the same exactly. around the same yeah. sector so 100 percent. how have you found because obviously when we started for people that don't know this um i was having a problem with my previous, or I'd had a problem with my previous business, which had just meant that unfortunately just kind of had to get cannibalized over a couple of years and had effectively wither and die, which was fairly disappointing for me. Maybe a story for another day, but. Right result for me. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, you don't know, do you, mate? Yeah, no, well, I've, you don't, I've, fine. You don't know at the time, do you? Nah. But I think I was kind of set in having run businesses for over a decade, or run a business for over a decade. I thought it would be pretty difficult to then go and go and work for someone. I tried, but I just don't think it was going to happen. But for you, you always worked for companies. So it was a bit more of a, a risk or a change of scene for you to actually run a business. Yeah, but I think like, before you like with me of doing it, because I know what you're going to say. But if, you, if we just fling it off, and I know what you're going to say. you say, how's it now being like running a business? But what I was going to say to you, I was going to say, why did you do it? <laughs> well, Still done, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what was it like? When you've done that for 10 years of stock services, mm -hmm. then you set up a recruitment business because it's the impression that it's a cheap business to run, which actually... Well, it's cheap to start. <laughs> well, it's easy, it's it's easy, easy to get When you look back, it still isn't that cheap, is it? No. No, <laughs> no. But for you, there was still that hangover of like year one and even probably going into that, then year one was almost a blur for you, I think, if you're honest. Like, it was almost like you had to try and love something that, when you just give up on not like, ten years worth of no yeah, trying to add something else. Yeah. How did you yeah. really find that? It's rubbish. It is crap when you've when you've tried and you've put loads of effort. Because I think anyone who anyone who's listening who's running a business or has their own business, like they know how tough it is. There's people that work within companies. And they're like lifers in companies. Then it may as well be their business. They work that hard within it. But generally, unless you've had something yourself, you just can't really get how much effort and how much you sacrifice um in your personal life for your business it's just it's just a thing so i think when you've done something for a period of time and then unfortunately due to circumstances that are completely out of your control you then think oh well 
this is just going to stop as of today. This isn't really going to work. And then you can kind of fall out of love with it a little bit, but also just fall out of love with actually just doing anything. Yeah. You should just really go into a bit of a dark place. So I think it was it was so good to the mental health tick box already. Yeah, exactly. But you can, but you can, wait, wait, that wasn't a thing then. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you were, you were a trendsetter. <laughs> yeah. But I think then to start something else, you've got that initial drive and that buzz and everything. But yeah, you're still in that transition because I'm still kind of doing bits for the old business at the start. So it did take me a bit of a while to kind of get into it. And then obviously we kind of got into it, COVID. And then I kind of got back out of it in a way because I was almost starting something new again. So it's been a bit of a journey, if that's the right word for it, for me over the last couple of years. But I do feel like, bizarrely now we're hitting this five year period and um we've made some changes again and i'm going to be getting more involved in recruitment again like day to day um i feel quite excited about it again now yeah do you think you like you know like because you didn't enjoy year one for those reasons i don't think it was that i didn't enjoy it i just think it, i just found it tough yeah okay tough not enjoying it whatever of the things <laughs> But do you think kind of when you come out of COVID, doing the media and finding that passion, because you obviously had a passion for video. When you, mm -hmm. was, you know, you, when we look back into that first 2019, you were editing people's sort of our videos. You'd done your first vlog at the Aberdeen Oil and Gas Show. That was amazing, that. About 80 minutes long. 80 minutes long. <laughs> Some people watched all of that. I know, losers. <laughs> I was one of them. <laughs> but you know, like when you started doing those things and you're obviously, you know, a big fan of Gary V. But uh, not so much Gary. It was it. I'm not going to say because you looked me off. Yeah, but anyway, you know, like as you started, you almost found a bit of a passion for videography. It was just fun. Do you think that's why you kind of went down that route? Do you think because you obviously there's a need for it. I think, I think I felt that, think that it was useful. Sort of like it was nice to have a passion back again. I think there was a bit of that. Yeah, there was definitely a bit that I was kind of right. I'm actually quite enjoying doing this. Obviously, you get a lot of people that are, that are then contact you and they're like, "Oh, that's good. That's like I'm enjoying that." You know, how are you doing it? Um, so that kind of gives you the incentive to do more of it. But I think I'm just one of those that quite likes to, once I've got my interest peaked in an area, I like to dive quite deep into it um, and try and get as good as you can at that thing within a short period of time as possible. It's difficult then sometimes to get, you get to a level and then it's like, how do you then push on again? And I think unless we've gone like really heavy into it, which I just, I don't think was quite possible. Um, yeah, you get to a level and then it's almost like, right, where, where's the next thing? What's the next thing I'm going to be doing, really? But I've always been a little bit like that. I've always liked marketing. You know, I did it at uni for a bit. Um, so that side of things just appealed to me. And then because of my background a number of years ago where I did loads and loads of presentation, it's like stacks of that kind of stuff, getting on camera and talking to people and talking in front of people and then being able to, like, help people who knew they wanted to try it but were quite frightened to try it and actually be that conduit to get them into it was fun so you know it's good but it's just like you know bluntly like the money in our sector to get paid what you need to get paid to do what we're doing companies just do not want to pay they don't want to pay the the cash to make it worthwhile which is obviously why we've had to like reduce it down again and like reduce that offering that we're going to be putting out there and really concentrate more on us and go right let's let's really grow this business and all the things i've been learning over the last maybe three years let's 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 hammer that within our own business it's interesting really because when you say concentrate on us because as much as people have seen you out on sites and it's great for content group to kind of have that exposure of it actually if you look at what we've done for our own brand it's been crap yeah people think it's really good of what we've done but actually mm -hmm. we've actually concentrated n not really on us We've basically got embraced socials before our sector has, mm. but it was more just to kind of it's a free advert to get your business out. Mm. When you do a startup, you got no, you got no, you got no yes, like budget, do you? No, and even now, I mean, we look at it. It's like yeah, you know, I was out seeing clients of ours and pretty much having the conversation with them and saying like, I want to continue doing work with you, but effectively, this is what I'd need to charge you. And if I was you, I wouldn't want to pay that. No, <laughs> like I was looking at it from when I had my own metal business and being like, well, how much value do I really think I can get from that? And unfortunately, you can't, it's like finger in the wind. You can't give people like a realistic ROI. And I think most businesses, when they're looking to put a significant amount of spend, unless they can justify it with an ROI, which you can't give, 
it's like it's yeah. a bit of a stab in the dark really yeah. so yeah 100 frustrating but i think you only learn by trying stuff and i think the value that we'll have as a business is is far outweighed by the cost i think we haven't lost anything from doing it have we you know we've learned no we've and it's created us to have really good conversations in companies that we couldn't get into before so yeah we'll continue to do so yeah yeah yeah, 100%. Do you suffer from any of these problems? Are you asking around your office trying to find a new supplier or source materials? Have you got aged or high-priced stock that you'd like to liquidate anonymously? Or would you like new business from customers that are guaranteed to pay you for your materials? If the answer to any of the above is yes, then you'll be pleased to know that the Metal Guys Talk Business Podcast is sponsored by Steel Buy. Steel Buy are a digital platform revolutionising the way businesses trade metal products online. Steel Buy offers risk-free trading where sellers are guaranteed to be paid and automated processing including certification, logistics and invoicing. The network of vetted buyers and sellers is continually growing and it's all housed in an easy-to-use trading platform accessible on any device. The online business-to-business marketplace for products is rapidly gathering pace and SteelBuy are ideally positioned to capture the changing demands of steel buyers. So check out SteelBuy today and be part of the future of metal trading. Now let's jump back into the podcast. How do you feel now... From when you started and you came into starting a business, because people talk to us about what's it like to start a business. I'd love to own my own business. I'd love to have a go at that. And you can tell that they're like, that's great what you're doing, lads. They like it and it's, it inspires people to be like, I want to have a go. But realistically, it's still difficult, like the idea of actually starting something up. So how did you find it? Like, If you go back, like, what was your thoughts right at the start when you were like, Right, I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a go at this. Or what was the what was the fear or the the, the worry? I did, I was I was really fortunate, so I didn't really have any kind of. You know, my only fear was it not working, but that was more on like how I'd feel about failing at something and how that looked within an industry sector that I was kind of known in, mm-hmm. I suppose. Um, so that was it. Was more like didn't want any kind of embarrassment more than anything else. Kind of, I was lucky that I didn't have any kind of financial worries because, unfortunately, um, me and my kids' mum, we'd split up. So I was, you know, I was back at my mum and dad saving to kind of have my own place. So really, all it did was just go, well, actually, the only thing I'm going to have to commit to here is going, instead of trying to be out with my mum and dad's within a few months, I might have to be here now for a longer period of time. Mm. And then it's like, well, how does that affect that? So really... It was quite, once I've kind of thought, well, actually, instead of trying to leave my mum and dad's in a few months, it might have to be a year or if not more. As long as that is going, then it will have to go from that. And that's really what happened. So that was the only sacrifice kind of I had to have. I think a lot of people can't do it is because the fear of it kind of going, I need to have that regular income coming in. Um, and we, we were lucky, aren't we? You know, when you look at, like, say, um, Graham, you know, putting the investment in, Really, it's like people don't get that. No. You know, and that's a lot of things where people don't know. It's like realistically, you know, Graham put the money in. We were okay for a, for a period of time. And even at those times where we've gone through hard times, he's then gone in again, hasn't he? Mm. And a lot of people don't have that. So I think sometimes when people are speaking to us and they can put you on some kind of like a pedestal, but they almost have that admiration. It's a lot of things that they don't know that it's like going, well, we didn't have any of those security things. It wasn't a case of me and you having a chat. And then going into it and going, like, how much have you got saved? How much have I got saved? We'll put that into a pot and that would get us by. And like, we didn't have any of that. So we mm. were quite fortunate. Um, kind of, I think when we first started, it's kind of, you don't have a clue what you're doing, do you? You know, you're just not like, um, you know, like you just, you're trying to start up and, you, and you, you're ringing around and you think, God, we know people. But I think the biggest shock for me when we first started is just like, say like your pals, but, People that you know in the market who aren't necessarily in a position of um, power, I suppose, of, they actually don't want to help you. They don't actually like to share someone's direct dial or try and organise for you to come in and have a chat. And that was like the biggest shock for me. That was like, whoa, we need to like almost, that approach has got to change. Um, and kind of then you're just trying to get through it, aren't you? I mean, I think in like the first year, it was just, it was just unenjoyable. But I probably, I probably wasn't working hard enough. I think I still had that kind of thing of going, this is my job and I work eight till five. Yeah. And a bit, I wasn't I wasn't really, but I look at what I was doing year one, it was like, 
wasn't was I was working hard enough? But you don't know what you don't know what the job is by then though, do you? No, because no, 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 no. I because remember I'd been out of recruitment for mm. like, over a decade. So although I kind of had more experience yeah. and understood it, it was like, well, I'm still ten years out. Of yeah. It's not like yeah. a day to day. You're not. It wasn't. It wasn't my main. I don't know. I look at it now, and it's like I think there's a kind of thing, isn't it? You know, I think I think when we first started, I don't think it was really like my kind of my my main priority. I think there was still stuff going on where I was trying to work out what my life, personal life, was going to look like. I'm, you know, stuff breaking up with Paula, and then you know, you got you got a new partner, and all this sort of stuff. And it's like it's not it doesn't become your main priority. You know, if I said now, like my main priority, it's work. Work is number one, and then it's like everything else comes. You know, in a, in another in another list, but if I now I'm like, you know, you hear it, and it's like you hear these like motivational things, don't you, on like TikTok and stuff. And as much as they're a bit cringe, it's true. You have to be obsessed. Mm. You know, it's like I don't. I look at it now, and I I get up at five, and my day finishes when that phone stops ringing, or you reach as many times that you can dial out. So sometimes, like when I look like this year, I've worked from five a.m. to seven eight o'clock at night, continuously. And I still beat myself up when I'm having my children on a Thursday, Friday. Go, I'm not doing enough. I feel bad because I'm walking out at half two. It's all yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you do. <laughs> like, like that's that's the thing, isn't it? And I think kind of now we're kind of growing into that. What's changed is my mentality. My mentality is it's going. You can't just treat this like you did when I worked at other businesses, where you turn up at, you turn up there, you have your lunch break, which is scheduled. You leave there and you leave the day behind. That's what has to change, really. I think for anyone who's trying to set up a business, you have to be prepared to go. You've got to sacrifice. I remember meeting a bloke New Year's Eve before we started this, and he just sold his business. He's like, I don't want to do it no more. And he said to me, he goes, don't let it obsess you. So if it obsesses you, you won't have to lie. And I remember thinking, all right, I will do that. And almost, but you almost have to. And I think that's you know, when people go, they want this lifestyle balance. So they're kind of, oh, oh self-employed, I've, I've gone, well, it's because they can't deal with, the people around them don't support them enough to be able to do it. And I look at it and go, really, you kind of, people, yeah, like Kim, she's like, she's amazing. Because you look at it and she just, just accepts that that's how it's going to be. To one day you hope that you can't, you get, you get a better way of life together, don't you? Mm -hmm. I think some people, if they don't have that, it almost looks like this is just, uh, this is just taking all of your life. We did this podcast with, FC Laser, um, it was the one I did with Matt Tipper rather than yourself. Um, and I remember uh, Danny saying that he was like, "There's no, there's no such thing as work-life balance. Like there is just no such thing as that. You've just got to graft and graft and graft." And like in those early years, now I, I think, as I say, on, on my flip side of it, because I've kind of been doing almost a completely different role from what you've been doing. Yeah. So the way I've been working has been so different to you over the last couple of years. So it's kind of, that's where the excitement comes in. And it's like, right, I've got, I've kind of got a more structured job again now. Like it's going to come back full circle and actually have more of a, more of a structure. Because when you're out going and seeing clients, visiting them on site, loads of traveling, staying away regularly, working with people in a creative capacity, creating video content, creating graphical, like it's totally different to what, our core business has been so it, it'd be quite interesting i think that that's where i'm quite excited to like get back into well, doing a bit of a hybrid i think in that position because there'll be some people listening and going well that's almost like a business development manager what's difficult for, for you in that position is that when you turn up on sites there's no grief so you're having when you're saying like you have to create it i mean you're literally having to go well i've got to kind of look at your facilities and create a video with no plan to go try and deliver something. And that's mm -hmm. the bit where it becomes mentally tiring. A lot of the time they've got an idea of what they want, but it's not It's not like, I guess, when I speak to you know the lads that have been working for me, the videographers that have all been through unit, like they normally have like a big brief on everything they're doing. It's almost like, yeah, we've come in and we know how to make a film, yeah. a documentary. And when we're on these sites, it's like trying to take the best parts of that, but without a brief and do it kind of on yeah. the spot and I think we've done well with it but yeah. it is mentally it's, it can be pretty yeah. exhausting yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty exhausting yeah. but but what, still still fun still what, enjoyed what it what have you learned within like doing it I think the main takeaway for me is that 
business is changing. There's two, there's two things that I want to talk about, really. The first one is we've been doing a lot of what I'd call profile stuff for businesses. And I think if we look at our business, our profile has been good, but only because we've just posted regularly, mainly me and you within the business. We've just posted and posted and posted. It no, not necessarily been strategic. It's just been making lots of noise about the industry, what we're doing and what's going on in the industry. And that's been good enough to keep our profile high. But when you look at marketing in general, a profile is only one part of the mix. You know, and the other things that need to be done are making the calls, which obviously we've done as a business in recruitment behind the scenes, you know, making sure that your websites work, doing all yourself and all the other stuff that needs to be part of a strategy. I think in our sector, I don't really think anyone's doing it. I don't really think anyone's doing it particularly well. And I think meeting people um, has made me realise that there's like there's quite a lot of fear. So there's a lot of people who are running businesses, owners of businesses, as well as people who are running big international companies or parts of those companies. And they're pretty frightened about like, well, what do we do and how do we do it? And I think what I've been learning is to make noise is more difficult than you'd think for businesses. For us, it's easy because we haven't got stakeholders where we're thinking, well, if we say something wrong, someone's going to give us a, you know, basically a bollocking. But for a lot of businesses, they're very worried about what they say. So what they end up doing is doing the wrong thing and they post really, really boring, crappy corporate content written like it's a presentation in a boardroom or internal. And no one cares. No one gives two shits, basically, about what you're saying. It's crap. So what I've learned is that the way you can get better traction and better engagement is by not looking at what your company's doing from like a boardroom environment and just sharing the more day-to-day -day content which fits around or writing it around what you're doing at work but just try and make it a bit more relatable and a bit more interesting and I think unfortunately people who might be listening to this are like well that's all well and good when you're doing what you're doing lads but we can't do that when we're a business that's part of a billion dollar turnover group or 100 million or something like that you know we can't just be but I would say that you're wrong and I think you can I think if you work to some kind of brief where the idea is not to put the company name into disrepute or to say anything that's going to be that's going to undermine what the business is but you can still be personal and you can still use your people and the biggest learning for me is that these kind of corporate messages and then these business messages even if you've got a business page on TikTok or Instagram or LinkedIn which is obviously the main one that people will be using people aren't really engaging with those pages and I think the, the biggest learning is that you should be getting your staff to be talking about what you're doing because they're so passionate about the business. When I'm interviewing people, they absolutely love the places they work a lot of the time. They really want to tell you what's great about their business and why people should be using them. But they just haven't got the, um, the support to be able to put those messages out and they don't have the knowledge of how to do it well and I think that's what I've been learning over the last couple of years. And I'm still no expert, but obviously I just have had a lot of practical experience having been into all these different businesses and then had a little bit of success ourselves in terms of building a bit of profile. So, yeah, the biggest learning for me is use your staff, use your people and be relatable and just yourself. Yeah. Like you do, <clears throat> you just, just talk and, you know, try not to care too much. Yeah, well, I just think like, from working big companies, they don't want you using it, do they? You know, I think kind of, I mean, it might have changed and it's been five years, but, you know, like LinkedIn being on your desktop just just wouldn't be what people, what managers would want to see. I still don't know if people are allowed to really use it day to day at work or if it's kind of, you know, on the, you know, under the phone, under the table, on the yeah, phone. I mean, I think they, people worry because it's like recruiters, LinkedIn had that fit, that thing of it, LinkedIn's a place to go for a job. Like, it was almost like a job board. I think mm. LinkedIn changed after COVID. It was like, well, it's, it's a place to get a message out. Mm. You know, I look I look at it and it's almost like my second CRM. Yeah. You know, literally all the time, I'm, I'm using it all the time. And then, you know, if you use on the back with Lusher, it's like you literally use Lusher free and you're getting an email address and a direct dial, in some cases a mobile number. 
perfect. It's a weapon, isn't it, really? Yeah, of course it is. Mm. You know, just adding to your network or design. Well, I was going to say, because I said there's two things, and I only did the first one. Go on. <clears throat> but the second thing I think is relevant from what I've seen is I think there's quite a big change now. And I think the idea of just having, pushing generic messages and a profile, I think is still important. But I think you can see now that it's going to be this more, um, there's going to be more direct messages sent um, highly personalized direct marketing campaigns um, a lot of that will be through socials but i also think that it will start happening more through um mail like mail shot campaigns where people are going to start segmenting their market up a little bit more but producing visual content and video content that's going to pinpoint either specific individuals that companies want to be talking to or specific types of companies that they want to be talking to. And I think that's where we're going to see companies really win when they start going into that more, yeah. yeah, looking at those segments and actually producing content rather than just this overall, we do this, buy our stuff. Yeah. Here's a palette of material. We, you know, like yeah. it's, it's not, that's not going to drive people to take action. And I think, you know, we've got a podcast we're going to be doing probably one of the next two or three that will come out after this one. Well, we're talking with a guy specifically about marketing in the industrial sector, and I think we can really dive into more of those topics. But for me, I think that that's going to be the big change that we'll see, and I think companies that get on board with that quick will see wins. And I think other companies, if you're not careful, you're going to start to see your market position eroded, and you won't even realise because these campaigns are going to be offline, so to speak. Yeah. In my opinion, anyway. Thank you for sharing it. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks for the question. It was as if it's as if we'd written it down. <laughs> the Metal Guys Talk Business Podcast is sponsored by TW Metals. TW Metals are a stockholder and distributor of nickel alloy, aluminium, titanium, and stainless steel products in a range of forms, including tube, bar, pipe, extrusion, as well as sheet and plates. They have sites located in the UK, Europe, the USA and Southeast Asia and are the largest supplier of aerospace tubes globally. With a whole host of accreditations and in in-house processing capabilities, they are the first choice for OEMs, tier ones, fabricators and engineering companies across the world and they're easy to deal with. I worked them for many years so I can recommend them. For more details, check out their website or even give them a call to chat about your requirements. Now let's get back to the pod. It always comes across worse when you start overthinking it. Yeah. You know, when I say to people, I'm like, stop caring. I know. You've said it yeah. because that's what you think. Yeah. So why are you bothered? I think that's what people worry about now, don't they? Once they say it, it's recorded, it's out there forever. It's like you overanalyze that pit. Mm. And that's the thing what I think people get scared with socials. Once you stick it out there, it's like it's there forever. Yeah, but it dies within 24, it's gone. I know, I know. But I know it's technically people. it's there, but it's like, who's going to dig it back? But that's what I think gives people the fear factor. You could have a B day, you go out today and have a meeting, mm. say something, not the best thing in a meeting. Yeah. It's never been managed. Unless someone rings up and goes, this person come out today and they offended me, or they said something that I wasn't happy about, it's never going to be known. But when it's out there on social, people feel like, oh my God, it's so much, we have to think about it. You've seen this when you're marketing. God, this is going to be out there forever. We need to look at this, look at it. And they try to make it absolutely perfect. Mm. But they wouldn't say someone you're doing internal sales today makes a BD call and it wasn't the best call. Pull him into the office and have a chat about it. But when you, when you start sanitising things, you get no reach, in my mm. opinion. I think that's the issue. It's like, yeah, you don't you don't want someone going out there and making like ridiculous statements online. Fair play, obviously. Yeah. But if you look at the people who are getting the most traction online and are getting all these opportunities, they, they sail a little bit closer to the wind. Yeah. That little bit, yeah. There's that little bit of them that's going, look, you've got to, you've got to sometimes yeah. well, have an opinion. The real, yeah, exactly. They're not robotic, yeah. 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 You awesome. know, so it's, um, so that, care less. I always say that to people. I'm like, don't not care, but just care a bit less. You'll be all right. And, he, and like I said, social media was gone. It's gone that quick. It doesn't, yeah. In my opinion, it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't really matter too much. I want to talk about the, Compton Cup. Um, for those of you listening who aren't going to be coming to the Compton Cup, you might want to just press the fast forward button now and just skip through. But um, we're into the third year of this. We decided to do. It. I mean, it was your idea originally. Why, why did you decide to do it, Mike? I just wanted just to have a, like a, an event. Um, initially, I had an idea of having like an expo. I thought like of doing something like that. But obviously, 
kind of that's just too big to try and get off the off the ground. Um, and thankfully, now it's happened. Like you know, if that's been paid, and and I think kind of for us, it was like to try and have an event for us to bring a net to bring an industry together. Um, so I thought it was quite important that we we can bring people to get involved who aren't necessarily a Compton account or a customer, and and that's worked out quite well. If we look every year, we kind of get introduced and meet people that we never be involved. There's still those people who still don't deal with mm. us. But it's at least you're getting to meet people, aren't you? So I thought that was good. I think a lot of the times when we're trying to do networking days, like it's golf, I don't play golf. So there's a lot of events that I just can't attend because I can't do it. And I was always like, well, there must be loads of people like me who don't play golf. So I can't go on these days. Mm. Um, and it's the same time, it's kind of having a charity that we've su supported. Year one was obviously the Down Syndrome Association. Second year was um, it was for a trust, wasn't it? For a trust, and for kind of going into this year's charity, obviously we still need to kind of choose one. It'd be nice to kind of if there's a story in the sector. So I look at it for like um, Ben's trust. Now that was like my wife's stepbrother who passed away due to a tumor, and to be able to kind of raise money on behalf of him was great. You know, and if there's stories, I suppose within maybe your workplace or something that's been affected with someone in the sector, it'd be nice to kind of have some to do something like that again because it is difficult sometimes when you're trying to pick a charity that all the big ones who normally get a lot of money through London marathons and, and things like that anyway, I think it's quite nice to have to have a smaller charity that there may be or like I say, there might be, you know, I remember doing one at, um, when I worked at Tisson for someone's son who had... Um, cerebral palsy and you know, it's about raising money to, to get more better care and things like that S stories like that really I mm -hmm. suppose but yeah it's, it's been a good event to do um, and this year's again it's going to be it's going to be hopefully bigger I think we've got 20 teams already signed up so it'd be nice to kind of get to another 20 well that's the thing wasn't it I think we've got was it how many first year was it 18 first year yeah, 18, 18 28 yeah so obviously maybe 38 yeah, for carrying on the same yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, it was like the things that were like the non, all the untangibles. Like when we first set it up, or you were talking about, I was like, yeah, that's a, that's a really great idea. But I was just looking at it as a couple of people, you know, we all come to bed and we kick a ball around. But the first year, when all the family, you know, like family members were getting together, um, it was quite nice that you were getting the different parts of businesses together, which, like you said, normally, if it's just a golf day, a lot of people are excluded from that if they don't play golf. But you don't tend to bring your families along on the golf course because it's you know you're wandering around this big yeah. thing. So you, you, whereas I think with this being quite small and football, you get people you can have a watch, you can get involved, get the music going and stuff like that. So even people can come along, and I think that's what we're going to encourage this year. Like people can come down if they just want to come and network or get involved in the day. Um, and there's something to get involved with. You can, you can at least watch it. It's a bit more enjoyable. Plus, some of the successes you look at, like when Van Leeuwen come. The first year was all about the merged from Bentley mm. to Van Leeuwen, and actually, it was the first time people was meeting who were based in Bolton, Basingstoke, um, Manchester, I think, as well. They had a site that they were, you know, northeast. You're yeah. bringing everyone together, as well as them bringing the families who you talk about. So I think that's like, like, it was never meant for that, but actually, it's really great. And I think this year, you know, we was. Um, speaking to um goals it's like people who've got kids there will be a coach who's going to try and do things as well and that'll be like children getting involved it'll be it just becomes a good all day event doesn't it really mm. and i think that's the thing i think if we can start to get more of the split of you know end users down there which we're getting um more service providers as well as yep. you know stockist distributors and some mills and stuff like we'll get a nice spread of people and it should just naturally become it's not just kicking a ball around, like it's a legit networking yeah. day out. Yeah, yeah. Sure, so. Which is the plan, really. So, yeah, come down, support it. The Metal Guys Talk Business podcast is brought to you by Compton Group, a recruitment agency operating in the metal, manufacturing, and engineering sectors. With a large, engaged network of candidates and clients, we help businesses make great hires in sales, 
operational, technical, quality and managerial roles, as well as assisting people in their careers by matching their unique skills and aspirations to businesses that are hiring. Having worked with more than 200 niche businesses since 2019, Compton Group have become the go-to recruitment partner for many of our industry's leading names. So talk to us about your next career move or let us work with you on your business's next hire. Compton Group, powering employment in the metal, manufacturing and engineering sectors. So I want to talk about how you've developed or how we might have developed over five years without, because sometimes it's difficult because it sounds like you're kissing your own ass, but how have you found, how much have you changed because it's because it's been five years since you started. Where are you now? Like what have been the the big learnings for you in that five year period? Oh, loads, yeah, loads. I've tried loads. I mean, don't forget, like Floyd was talking earlier about you know people kind of are well done, fair play. It's a lot of people I worked with were almost like, how's he doing that? Because I was just like a really loud person in the office. The one who's having all the banter. The one who's messing around, kind of. Yeah, it was all right with selling, but like Jesus Christ, you know, I wouldn't have him like do what he's doing now. So I think I've changed loads. I think kind of, you know, I think kind of having a sub of a team who we work with kind of makes it more difficult. I think we've probably learned more of the, the last 12 months mm. than we perhaps the previous four because the teams grew, you know, we're like a headcount of 10 now. So that kind of changes. And I think you kind of have to kind of, try and draw back on experiences when you've worked in businesses, look at the kind of the managers and leaders you've had previously to try and morph yourself from being a bit like them, really. I think kind of, or not. Yeah, but it's a few of them as well, yeah. There's definitely a, there's definitely a, f- a few of those. But I think kind of, you know, 2023 was more about kind of understanding what all these sort of things mean, really. Processes, procedures one-to-ones what you want your team to look like what you want it to do that's kind of that's really was the yeah 23 was all about that really kind of and that's that's the hard thing because sometimes you don't know what you're doing a lot of the times you don't know what you're doing and it's actually funny because when i look back now and look at my like managers over my career they probably didn't know they were doing either if they're really honest you have to do it in your own way don't you to try and get what you want but it's um it's been working on myself is is it's like I really had to kind of do it, not trying not to be as emotional, trying not to kind of, you know, put too much pressure on yourself. I think you can always try and look for perfection. And I think sometimes it's like that, that slight just doesn't exist, does it, really? No. And kind of um, trying to get the team to come along. And that's the hardest thing sometimes is like when you're trying to grow a business, you stick a target in mind. And when you hit it, you then do it a bit. And then you hit it up again. It's getting everyone to, to come along with that journey. Because I think a lot of times people can go, well, actually, that we've, we've really grew this. And obviously, we've got, you know, two people within the organisation who've been with us really since day one. You know, mm-hmm. obviously, George was here even before even before me and you. And then you got, like, Mad George. There was no one before me. No, there was. <laughs> we were still doing stock services. <laughs> I didn't just stand out on this podcast. You were still doing it in 2019. Might get a rebate off your arm, off your dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Might invoice him for that time. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, and then obviously we had Matt in 20, 2020. So when you start looking at, like, say, volume of what we've done, where, where we was when, you know, say, especially when Matt joined, to then look at it and go, well, we're double, we're more than double that now. You know, and then we've got more people coming in, which then brings different, it's kind of bringing those key people along with you which can be challenging um and also kind of then having to go up where we are now we've got a a new person in now chris it's going up again and i think that's the challenging bits because everyone wants to do well everyone wants pay rise everyone wants bonuses but it's going every time you get to something it probably can feel in a smaller business a little like very relentless because realistically when you work in big businesses your target doesn't really change that much you know, you might go from say, let's say, two hundred grand profit a month to two hundred five, two ten. When you're going up by fives, we're going up sometimes. It's like, right, we've just bought a load of new red cane. Going up by such and such amount. Yeah, you got. You, you got yeah, to, you yeah got I agree. Yeah, but when you, I think that's probably the the um, 
probably a, the challenging thing because also as you're doing that more, it's people can also then start looking at yourselves thinking you're doing amazingly well. Those headaches come where you're having a company car and you're having, you know, that's the stuff where you're almost like, God, you don't want it to look that way. You need it, it's, it's a tool. But when people haven't seen it where you think, oh God, you know, when I first started I was driving a Citroen C1, Non's car, that yeah, you. exactly. Do you remember going but through that? Part? That are the things. They are the things that you want, where you always want to kind of everyone. It's a, yeah, that's why the whole thing was as a team that you're all winning together. But I think the other challenge is that I, you know, some people say well, I don't really worry about it, but it's like I think it's it's kind of that's to get everyone to come through together, isn't it? I think that's the that's the thing. Like anyone, anyone who's managed anyone knows how challenge it is. Even if you're managing one person, it can be difficult because you've got to think about someone else. As soon as you've got multiple people or more mouths to feed or more, more mouths to motivate, yeah, it's tough. It's also not like knowing them as people, isn't it? You know, when you're a small team, you know everyone's husbands, wives, kids, you know, all of that kind of stuff, what they're doing the weekends, what's what's going on, what the things going on around the personal lives. It's like, it's a lot more than just going, you know, 20 calls today, you got our five interviews by the end of the week, all of that kind of stuff. It's more kind of, you have, you get really close to people, don't you? Mm. You know, you know what's going on. That's the, and that's the bit where you have to learn then of going, how close do you get to how far away you stay away so you can still manage them effectively. Yeah. That and that is a pain that's really difficult. Yeah, because yeah, the people right. who work with in our team, I'm like, if whether they work to a Compton group or not, I would generally spend time with them in my own personal time. Mm -hmm. Have you changed in five years? I think I've got better at interviewing. Yeah. Trying to talk less. I know some people might find that <laughs> difficult to believe. How do you really think? What do you think, Sly? What have you learned? Because like, you, you must have learned a lot. Look, when you, when you, like, you know, Worked at stock services. It wasn't a starter. You've gone in to support your dad because well, it was the business. It was yeah. We, I kind of joined it, but he was trading. But the point was, when I started, we then started our business. Like the trading business was kind of separate to what we were then yeah. doing as a stockholding distribution business. So when still, it, I think so, still that, feel like a starter. Well, it was yeah. I mean, like we literally found a warehouse, built built offices in. Remember, you still had a client base. We had like four, four or five clients that were still trading. Still yeah, still fun. Yeah. yeah, it was there was there was a bit. You started this, you had zero. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But it's still, I think people think when you you come in, it's like, oh, your dad's got a business, and then you come in, and it's like, oh, you're doing all right. We meet plenty of second, third generation business owners who've got very well set, substantial businesses. Yeah. That was that was still new, so it was different doing this. But I think because of doing stock services where effectively if we take away some of the trading accounts, a few of these accounts, realistically it was like starting from complete scratch like we've done here. And then when we did the media, it was like starting from scratch again. So I've always kind of worked in businesses where it's been start up, start up, start up. Um, so I'm quite used to it in that respect. It doesn't make it any easier, but it's just what I know. So you just, like I'd, I'd be quite confident that we could try and do something different again and just have a crack at that, like we did with the putting putting our publications together, the Metal Magazine, like we did with starting the, the media bit, like we've done with you know, going out and start doing some public speaking and doing training and things like that. They're all slightly different things that people niche into. And we've just had a crack and done all right, yeah. <laughs> realistically, yeah. at all of them, because I think we've looked at them without... A lot of people go into a business or start a business because they've been in the sector or they've worked for a company for say 10 years and they're like, all right, well, I know all these customers, I know the process, I know all the stuff, so I'll start a business. And they're literally just competing with themselves yeah. from when they were at the old business. Yeah, that was me. Yeah, I've never done that. You know, it's, it's always been start up, start up, start up, start up, start up, which is great. But on the flip side, as it then grows, because this is the, the biggest I've ever been as a business in terms of numbers, um, it's tough because I'm quite self-motivated and I just go and just do it myself. So then the idea, you know, you, you said the other day, like you were at a meeting and basically the, the guy you saw said exactly what I've just said, which is back myself, just do it myself. You, you can have teams of people around, you, but you, you kind of just, you can be a bit um, driven to just do your thing. And like everyone else, it's just like, just crack on and do your job, lads. Get on with it. 
that I shouldn't need to be telling you to do your job because I don't need someone to tell me to do mine. Yeah. But that that's the thing that I think I'm gonna have. I still need to get better at. Just making sure that I'm. I think I can lead well, and I think people will follow. I don't think day to day in terms of like managing people. I don't really like doing it. In fact, I don't like doing it. <laughs> I'll be really honest. Don't do I it. hate it because it's it's tough. It's difficult. People are fucking needy, man. Really needy. No disrespect. <laughs> well, yeah, they can they can be. They can be. But I think at certain points you can feel it because of how you feel in yourself, can't you? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I think this, is, this is just my opinion, yeah. but I think there's yeah. like, sometimes people want you to be like, oh, well done, well done, well done all the time. And it's like, my mentality is just crack on. You know, I said to you, really early doors, it was like, you take a deal. As soon as you've got a deal over the line, normally you know you've got it before you've got it. And I'm just like, right, done, mm. next. Sometimes people just want you, the boss to know that you've got a deal. I do say, well done. Hello. Hello. Regularly. Good job. Nice work. I like that. That's, well, I think it goes a long way, doesn't it? I think so. But I was a really needy person to manage. I know. So I kind of <laughs> understand. I understand. <laughs> I understand it. I think, no. again, I think I probably didn't have, you know, you, you've had a lot of more experience working for a lot of these bigger businesses where I haven't had that. I think that's where it works quite well because we've got those different, oh, yeah. different backgrounds. There, really. yeah, there is, yeah, there is. And I think kind of also like, like with uh, Grace, like he managed like some really big businesses in like some really kind of in a certain, in a certain era of yeah. where you could do what you want and say what you want in a kind of way. And I think kind of at points where he's developed and managed you, because there would have been that when you've just come mm -hmm. out and not known. Obviously, that's that's the person that you look to. You also look back at that when you do recruitment at a time. Mm -hmm. You're working with some real, yeah, some, hit, <laughs> some hitters. Yeah, there's some real dicks. Mm -hmm. Well, I've not really had that. Far away yeah. words of thanks for you. I think it was interesting when I was doing that because obviously when I did recruitment originally, it was a diff very different market to how it is now. But some good, some bad. Yeah. Um, like there always is when times change. But some of the people I was working with early doors, um, particularly the second company I was at, I mean, on it, they were like, it was incredible what they were billing and what they were making. I mean, it was just frightening. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely frightening. And I, I've got to be honest, like I kind of resented a bit coming out of it. When my dad approached me and said, look, I wanted to work for me, it took me probably a year to like really get my head into right, I'm doing something else and really truly seeing the value of doing, like having my own thing. Because I was like, I was smashing it in regard, like it was going, I was just like, I'm gonna make a fortune, I'm good at this. So as it was going up and then I just had to stop, all of a sudden just be like, they're gone. It was quite frustrating really. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. looking back, yeah, you can do it now, mate. mate. Yeah. That's a trivial help, mate. Yeah. You got a recruitment business. Yeah. Yeah. You go, mate. Yeah. I'll have a go again. Yeah, have a go. Yeah. Don't yeah. have that dream shit up to. I'll get back on it. Yeah. yeah, get back on it. You've had, yeah. you've, had five, you've, had five, you've had five years, mate. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's it. Can I have my job back? Yeah, no problem. Do we run a recruit some teachers? 10 grand a month. Oh, easy. Yeah, get these not a problem. Good. All right, the duck's back, mate. Good. Do you have any regrets over the last five years? Anything you wish you would have done? Anything done better? Yeah, regret sides. No, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty chilled with with all of the stuff that's gone on. I think there was one thing that occurred that if we could go back, we wouldn't have done no, or we wouldn't no. have strong armed it the way we yeah. did. But that's how you learn. Like, yeah. and also there were circumstances that meant we we acted in a certain way that we thought was okay at the time. Yeah, would I do it again? Absolutely not. But apart from that. I think everything else, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty okay with. You know when people say when you start a business, you need to like, you need a bit of luck, don't you? Yeah. Do you when do you when you look on it now and go, COVID was luck. Oh, uh, I the, mean, for yeah. The business. I still think even now, like you don't really know. I think we're still. I don't think we're far enough along still to really know if it was if it was lucky or not at the time. I mean, look, we're still paying loans back for it. You know, we had to dip more into money. Like we got more debt. You know, it's it's not. You know, 
it wasn't great for us. Yeah, but but if, you, if you look at it from a candidate's point of view, the biggest thing, getting jobs was never difficult. Mm. Getting candidates to trust you with their career was, that was a thing that we never even thought about. Yeah. Because basically, you're naively going to go, pick up jobs, advertise, and people apply. Mm. When you look at the caliber of candidate we were getting to what we do now. Yeah, it's better. And I think that's because of COVID. Yeah. I don't mean look of like, oh yeah, you know, got all that, that sort of stuff. But I do think it kind of definitely helped. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's, I think you can never really know about the lock. I think it's when, when you speak to business owners who've had businesses for 10, 15, 20 years and you say, right, what were the things that were lucky in your business? And I'd say like day one, we had a guy who sorted us out, gave us a load of jobs and it got us off to a nice start. Like within month two, we had a company call us in and gave us like four proper jobs that we could work. And it was nice because it was like, okay, it gave you that impetus early doors. Um, and there's been there's been other things that you could, you could look back on. But, you know, for me with COVID, yeah, there were some advantages to it. Yeah. But so so I look look at it, this is like, obviously I appreciate those opportunities because you do, don't you? Mm. But it's like, if you didn't ring them, you wouldn't have got it. That's hard work, isn't it? I think, yeah, I think crazy luck. People say that, don't they? But I, I look at those right early doors. I think sometimes you need some quick wins or you need some significant yeah. things early. Um, and I think it was, yeah, I think maybe we positioned ourselves in the right place. But I'd still look at them and go, it was pretty lucky that we got those early yeah, yeah, to get was, us yeah. going. Yeah, yeah, you know, and so, make you believe that you yeah. were like, right, okay, we could, we've got yeah. some kind of future in doing this really. Yeah, it's fake. So I never believed at all in 2019. No, I know. I know you didn't. <clears throat> I know you didn't. No. But you can't, but you can't, it's like, it takes time and you've got a lot, like you said, you've got loads going on and yeah. you were coming out of being an employee to being yeah. self-employed. That's huge. It's a massive yeah. step. A lot you were saying about security. Most people's issue with starting up a business is you have to mentally think, I'm going to make no money for potentially three plus years, five years. I'm going to make no cash. I could earn more money doing what I'm doing and I could earn doing this with heart, with a quarter of the stress, a tenth of the stress. Yeah. So it's a real difficult thing to do, but you've always got to look at that long term, but you can't look past getting paid every month because if that's all you've ever known, it's like, it's a huge change. Yeah, yeah. I think that's where people go wrong, that they want to like, they want to go, well, well, I'm earning this and I get this and I get, and you go, okay, so carry on then. Yeah. Like, crack on, no problem. No one's taking it off you. It's just like, if you want to do something else and you want to, and you want that thing, which is being self-employed. When you, when you look at it now, five years on, mm -hmm. like what do you see the benefits of being like running content group? Oh, oh loads. I mean, I could we want. Sort of there financially, and we said earlier on, you know, financially, it's like when you think of it, when I first started, mm -hmm. it was just thought, I was like, this is an opportunity to, Basically, earn really good money. Yeah. And I look at it five years on, I'm earning more than I did when I was in the metal game, but not by a lot, not by, not by much. Mm -hmm. You do more now in the metal game now if you just went and got a job. Yeah. Don't worry about Like you could, you yeah. straight away you'd be earning considerably more realistically. Yeah. Realistically. But I think the benefit of, of doing your own thing mm -hmm. is we could really turn this into something big. Like, this could really go, this can really develop. There's loads and loads and loads of opportunity to make this big. And if you do, you win, and you win big. Whereas I think when you're working within a business, there's only so far you can kind of go, in my opinion, you know, unless you become a shareholder, you, you, you know, you start buying into it and earning that side. And I just think it's too, for me, you'd be like, I, I would, I couldn't, I don't think I could do it. Well, you couldn't conform. No. <laughs> That's the one other thing, isn't it? No. Like you'd just... Well, I just I don't I don't mind if like if the decision if it's sweet and it's like that's a good idea, but like when you get told to do something, it's like, well, that's thick, like that's just wrong. Yeah, like I'm not gonna then waste my time doing something which I completely. That's why that's what I struggled with big businesses because I think the people who are like real corporate people come mm. for me, people who go to the top. Then corporate, you can't winch about nothing. That's what I'd say. And the other thing is, is you have to be on board with every idea. Mm. Where I would question certain things. I know that as certain people I work with that have come in one day and said, we're selling wooden pallets. There'd have been about 15, 20 people. Mm. And what a great idea. 
Yeah. The crowd is brilliant. Yeah. And that's that. And, but to work in like big go to that's what you have to do. Yeah, yeah. Not for me. Mm. No, me. Yeah. No, I didn't know I got to the top anyway. No. We wouldn't have. No. That's the point as well, isn't it? It's like you've got you like you gotta really look at it. Be like, well, how, how would you could you could you really run one of those big businesses? Uh, no, 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 at all. But I, I, I don't think it develops in businesses as much as like you should do. You know, that's one thing that we do a lot with our team. We, you know, we spent a lot of money on training, development. Mm. You know, you look at our training for last year, what, we done 15, 15 grand mm. minimum. Well, I never had anyone training. It's almost like you've got to train tough, which is one thing I learned from doing the podcasts. I look at it and go, now I have to think about and develop myself. I have to think that way because the business is getting bigger. We have different headaches. But if I never had that, I wouldn't have done it. Mm. And I think that's like where the massive thing for us when we've got when we've got the team is invest in them, make them better. Because it's like there's only a certain point, at certain points as the business is getting busier, you can't always increase your headcount because of cost. So you have to be like, well, how do we get the most out of those people? And sometimes it's like that person needs to learn a new skill. And I'm not very good at teaching. So it's like you have to bring it outside out, don't you? I don't think I don't think that's done enough in the sector. Yeah, well, it's been something that we're going to be talking about, aren't we? Like, yeah. You know, we've got a podcast with uh, Tom Mallons, who, you know, we went and did some training with him, which was useful. You know, I definitely think we helped because I think sometimes salespeople can always get that. Yeah, I'm a salesperson. I'm, I'm brilliant at selling. I'm really good at selling. And it's like, well, well are you? <laughs> yeah. You know, have you actually had any training? Were you just better than the other people? I don't think, yes, I don't think yes, we get any training on selling. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's the thing with sales. You don't get any training on it. Yeah. Well, it'd be interesting to hear, you know, we'll, we'll have that conversation with him. Yeah. And I think, again, going back to the, the pod to kind of finish this off, really, I think going, going forward with this podcast, we don't just want it to be stories. You know, there's going to be an element of that as we kind well, of do this one. Well, a little bit, but, you <laughs> yeah. know. But I think, I think there's value in that. But I also think there's value in talking about specific topics which are re related to this industry yeah. sector. So, you know, that that's kind of where we want to go with it. And I think it'd be quite interesting over 2024 to see how many we can do. I think just getting these, re you know, the regularity yeah. of them, trying to keep the quality of them high is, is really the aim of the game, really. So I'm excited. Cheers. Yeah, chin chin. <laughs>
Um, and it was an interesting podcast going back all the way through her career from the early days in the industry all the way to where she is now. And she was pretty candid, as we would uh, have assumed. I've known Gail for a long time, and uh, it's well worth a listen, that podcast. So stay tuned for that one next week, Tuesday. And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors for the podcast, both Steel Buy and TW Metals, and you, the listener. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next week.